welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Now this is a video that I've been excited about making really ever since I got the very first email from this man. Please welcome Dean to the channel. Hi guys. <laughs> now, you might look at me and go, oh Sam, you're sitting in an old Mercedes today. Well, this is a very special 190E. The number plate might have given it away and probably the title of the video would have given it away even more because this car used to belong to Ayrton Senna. Yes, that's right. The iconic Formula One driver bought this car from you back in 1985. Five. <laughs> so Dean is going to be uh, talking me through the story of how he ended up with the car, the history of it, why Senna bought this car, and also we're just going to enjoy the experience of driving it on some of Melbourne's sunny beachside roads. So, Dean, talk to me. Uh, should we start off by telling the audience kind of like the story of Senna and the 190E? Because uh, I'm familiar with it because I'm a nerd, but, but not everyone will know it. No. So go on, why, why don't you kick things off and, okay. and inform? Well, back in 1984, Mercedes-Benz and Nicky Lauda, um, for the opening of the new Nürburgring, um, organized a celebrity uh, race um, that Basically, every Formula One racing driver uh, that was still living was invited. It was a real like race of champions type thing, Correct. wasn't it? You know, like uh, you had Sterling Moss, Denny Hume, yeah. Jody Schechter, yeah. uh, Nicolau, Alan Jones, obviously, yeah. Alan Jones. I mean, yeah. it was a real creme de la creme okay. of Formula One drivers from the current time, 1984, yeah. and the years before. Emerson Fittipaldi was invited, but unfortunately he pulled out um, at the last minute, which meant there was a, a position available. Um, and kind of those in the know recognized Senna as, you know, the upcoming rookie, so to speak. Um, and, uh, you he know, he was, drive. Yeah, he was three races in, I believe, um, having signed with Tolman. And, and yeah, he got Fittipaldi's place. And I know Fittipaldi and Senna were quite close at that point as well. I know, I think, I think Fittipaldi had seen sort of Ayrton grow up, so maybe yep. put in a kind yep. word as well, saying, oh, you should let this kid Correct. have a go. Yep. And at that point, a lot of the F1 field and sort of media really didn't know much about him, right? He was kind of like this unknown kid that was suddenly slotted into this race. And when you looked at the lineup, you were like, wow, wow, wow. who? <laughs> wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Uh, so he was up against real kings of the sport because even Alain Prost at the time still wasn't a world champion yet, but yeah. was about to become yeah. a world champion and start dominating the sport. So That's right. he was there. What happened? Where did he qualify? So he qualified second. Um, Alan Prost was first. Um, the two um, guys actually met for the first time at this race. Oh, okay. Um, Do you know that? So How did that come about? So, um, my understanding is that Mercedes-Benz had actually asked Alan Prost to um, pick Ed and Senna up from the airport uh, oh. and take him to the circuit. Oh, um, wow. And so that was their, their first meeting. Um, ironically, uh, in qualifying, um, Prost qualified him first and Senna qualified wow. second. Well, he probably wasn't expecting that, huh? <laughs> I think we've skipped one quite important fact that we didn't mention is that they were all doing it in Mercedes 190 yep. Yeah, we should, oh. probably, should, probably should have mentioned that. Yeah, that, that, that one slipped on when yeah. we got carried away with the They're all the identical. Um, Everyone was in an identical car. Yeah, 190 T3 uh, 16 valve, otherwise known as the Crossworth. Mm. Mercedes produced this car for rally purposes. That was the original oh. brief. Um, but then Addy brought out the Quattro. Okay. And just yeah, pooed, pooed on everyone. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, okay, so let's nod. Yeah, yeah. Mercedes-Benz at that point, I think, very quickly redesigned, you know, what this car was going to be used for. Really. Okay. And it was just, you know, the sporty version pre-AMG. Sure, um, of course. You know, the head um, went off to Cosworth Engineering and they developed the head, hence the name, the Cosworth. Um, and basically, it, the, the block starts off as, as a regular 2.3 Mercedes-Benz supplied engine. Um, Cosworth developed the head and there was uh, some internal modifications made to, to strengthen it. Um, so we have this race in these souped up Mercedes yeah. with all these Formula 1 drivers, random Ayrton Senna, second on the grid. What happens? 
He goes and wins it. He goes and wins it. He goes yeah. and wins it to everyone's surprise. Yeah. No one could believe it. This young kid out of nowhere. And that that really sort of set off his kind of journey into the history books, didn't it? Because that's right. Everyone started to take note, thought this guy's a real wonder kid, we're all on the same car and he's trounced all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly damp conditions, I think, if I'm right. Yeah. I think which is what a few right. people complained about and used yeah. as an excuse. Um, but yeah, that that was his beginning uh, of his journey. And so Legend has it, you tell me, uh, he went back to the UK where he was living, sharing a house with... Uh, Mauricio Gujelman. Okay, which is one of his really close friends, yeah, right? both Brazilian. He decides, well, I've won this amazing race, I might as well go and buy the car. That's exactly right, and I think it was just almost for, um, you know, memento purposes, really, as a reminder of, of the race and, and the fact that he won it. Um, he parted with his own money, Apparently this is the last car that he actually ever paid for oh, wow. um, and he was even given free cars before he bought this so it was clearly quite important to him. Sure. Uh, How much was the car about then? Do, do, do you know? Do you have that? Um, I do. I had the invoice. So oh, okay. I think it was like 75,000 Deutschmarks but um, interestingly um, Mercedes-Benz um, did give Ed uh, a generous uh, discount oh, of I think nice. 20 okay. or 25 You would hope as Ed said, even at the beginning of your career, yeah. having just won that race, that you would get at least a little bit of money off. <laughs> he owns the car, do you know how for how many years? Yeah, he had it um, whilst he was with Tolman and then later Lotus. Um, and he actually sold the car prior to um, relocating out of Isha and Surrey um, in 1987 wow. to Monaco when he signed with McLaren. Sure, when the big bucks started coming when in, he ran out time to, time, time to yeah, park yeah, ways correct. with the car that he'd spec from factory. I mean, where, do you, where do you park your cars in Monaco? Oh, yeah. Hey, I've experienced that in not a lot of places. <laughs> it can be very difficult and the curves are vicious. <laughs> so how on earth do you end up with this car? Okay, so in 1987 when Senna uh, moved to Monaco, he actually sold the vehicle um, to his manager's best friend, um, who at the time that I bought the car was 76, um, and he was an architect, and he was looking to downsize his collection of cars, and then I was just very, very fortunate. The car was being advertised by the Audi dealership in Gloucester. No way. Um, so it's still in the UK? Still in the UK. Advertised on Auto Trader through Audi Gloucester's um, dealership. Any reference to the fact that Senna had owned it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. Absolutely. So did it have a little bit of a premium? Um, it did. It did, yeah, yeah I can imagine, um, yeah. <laughs> I bought the car in 96, which was two years after of Senna died. So, um, you know, there's still obviously a lot of discussion, uh, you know, a lot of sentiment still. Yeah, um, I think the story of, you know, his connection with this car and how it was kind of really the beginning of his uh, rise to absolute stardom yeah. is such a great one. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that he then went and bought the car as yeah. a sort of, you know, reward or me memento to himself is yeah. brilliant. But I love the fact that now you are one of the owners that... I'm uh, so lucky, you know, I've had it for 22 years. Whoa. And every time I get in it, it still... Um, evokes something? Evokes an emotion that um, it's hard to articulate. It's, um, but such a special car, it really is. Well, so let's talk about that real quick, because I want to firstly... I want to in a second find out how you got it to Australia and uh, why you had to remove the air conditioning when it's 35 degrees here, Dean. Uh, Sorry oh, about that. But, uh, but, but sort of as a car to drive, because obviously pretty dated now, yeah. I think it still looks kind of great. It's got those sort of flared parts. It's got a little it's very angle low, to isn't it? it. Yeah, really low. And you can tell it's got a bit of aggression to it. Um, in its period and sort of over this, how, how is that yeah. translated? Do you enjoy driving it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I, I look at it really as a as a sort of you know great grandfather almost to the modern day C63. You know, um, in many respects, this is this is what started it all. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, look, it's it it's a comfortable um, you know everyday car, and I. You know, I try and drive it as, as much as I can. Um, How, is that 150,000 miles on yeah, the clock? Yeah, this is so all you, the you odometer. Driven it quite a lot, miles, then. Yeah, 152,000 <laughs> miles on the clock. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's just reliable. It's easy to maintain. It's easy to look after. 
you know, people talk about old, um, you know, early 80s Mercedes as being the last of the type, you know, and um, so over-engineered this car. When it came out, it was still, it was a £50,000 car, you know, it was, it was a ridiculous amount of money back in the 80s. But unbelievably smooth. For something that's supposed yeah. to be a kind of, you know, driver's track weapon. If you think nowadays, to a C63, yeah. I don't know if you've been in the latest generation, but my God, is it a harsh ride. Yes. Yeah. And this, you know, is it still feels comfortable. I'm sure once yeah. you get up and go, yes. you can start to get it dancing, but yeah. we're still in refinement and comfort. It is. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. I mean, well, I, I say that, but we don't have air conditioning. We don't. <laughs> so, um, come on, let's and, look. And, you know, that's such a shame because it was so efficient. Oh. So, so, okay, so, so how did it get to Australia and why did you have to remove okay. the air conditioning? Because I hate you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we emigrated to Australia from the UK uh, in 2004. And, um, yeah, part of the entry requirements for bringing the car in was the removal um, of the air conditioning. Um, just because back in the day, um, the gas um, in these old early cars um, wasn't very environmentally friendly okay. to our precious ozone. And I think, you know, just adding air conditioning um, is just going to work the engine sure, harder than it sure. really deserves to be worked. So, with all I this history, are you? I mean, this is a keeper for life, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, it, to be honest, it's the sort of car that I, I hope my children would have been excited as I am, but they're not overly excited <laughs> about it. So Maybe with time, knows. how old are they? Um, uh, 20 and No way, 16, you do not have a 20 so. year old kid. Yeah, I'm 20. Congratulations to you, but uh, they're not really kids. At that okay, well, it. if you're watching kids, this is a car that you don't want to miss. So you would be extremely lucky to be to have this as a hand-me-down. So don't knock it. Um, well, look, it's been a very casual and very enjoyable drive here along the seaside, um, and just amazing to hear the story and learn about the history of this thing. As I say, for an F1 nut, it's amazing, sort of you know nostalgia. And I think you're a very lucky man, and Thanks, you got yourself a fantastic car. Great stuff. Thank you.